Oh, did you hear that, Nick? What, what, a way to, what a way to start the interview. It's like, it's like that was my brain, I think. <laughs> Nick, how have you been? I've, I've been good, yeah. Very, very busy. Unprecedentedly busy, actually. I'm, I'm normally, in a normal year, I'm usually extremely busy. Um, but um, with the whole pandemic thing and lockdown and the peop- people's love of audio books and audio drama, um, I've had lots and lots more to do, which has mm-hmm. been you know, great, but an awful lot of pressure as well. Yeah, it was actually interviewing you back in, oh, when was it? March now, I think think it was March, um, that introduced me to uh, this whole other world of Doctor Who audiobooks. The most recent one I've watched is uh, Out of Time with David Tennant and Tom Baker. It was incredible. I'm a changed man. <laughs> good, good. Well, you know, there's plenty of stuff at bigfinish.com for you to find. Yes, but of course, Nick, uh, today we are chatting about Daleks. And I don't know how to say it because it's got an exclamation mark on the end. So is it Daleks? Yeah, yeah, it has to be Daleks. Oh, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> and um, it's the recent announcement as part of the Time Lord Victorious set or, or, or sort of, what would you call it? Story, you... Well, it's a story arc really going across multiple uh, types of media. So there are audio dramas, there are books, there's comic strips, you know, uh, it, it's basically all the spin-off media uh, mm-hmm. involved in the world of Doctor Who have all got together and, and this incredible story is being produced that uh, links up in all sorts of strange and bizarre ways. The brilliant thing about it though is that you can uh, pop in on each individual thing and it's not um, essential for you to have heard, read, or whatever the others, but mm-hmm. it enhances the experience. But yeah, you know, it's a bit, you know, I think once once you get into it, you just have to devour all of it. Yeah, and Doctor Who fans will be aware of what Time Lord Victorious means. Um, so, what is this entire story about? Because Time Lord Victorious was a phrase first introduced in the two thousand nine special Waters of Mars done my research um very good thank you um but uh what is this story about essentially well (laughs) without giving too much away because i know that's pretty tough i think i'd rather i think i'd rather not give anything away but it involves many doctors Mm -hmm. and it involves uh, the dark times and something being altered in time and the doctor struggling to put things right that's Mm -hmm. basically and it's got lots of daleks in it which also of course culminates in this incredible uh, animation that's been done uh, mm. with the, the real Dalek epic story. Animation isn't something that's new to Doctor Who. I know that a couple of episodes have actually been recreated recently uh, with the Daleks. Um, so what, what is Daleks all about? Again, without giving too much away, what can you tell <laughs> us? What can I tell you? Well, uh, surprisingly, it's about Daleks. Oh my, um, wow. the, the, I know. <laughs> uh, there are some incredible Dalek characters in there being written beautifully because there's no doctor in this. So the focus is very much on the Daleks struggling to achieve something and being outwitted along the way. But also there are different Dalek characters. So uh, the main Dalek character is really the Dalek Emperor, who, who I've been you know, playing since the very beginning of doing Doctor Who back in 2005, although we filmed it in 2004. Um, And uh, one of his uh, very uppity underlings, the Dalek strategist, who Mm -hmm. is this very ancient and wise Dalek, whose job is to sort of think outside the box and think of ways, new ways for the Daleks to become even more powerful. And his casing, you may have seen some of the artwork that I've been posting that the BBC have been kind enough to let me have to post around on social media. He's one of the oldest kind of Daleks, like from the very first Dalek story we ever saw on television, you know, back in 1963, 64. Um, And he's got a very sort of battered casing and he's ancient, especially evil and very um, conniving and mysterious, you know. And it's the Daleks coming up against some mysterious force which they don't quite understand but of course believe they can defeat and it's a question of how they go about that and how they do or don't succeed and each episode has a a new adventure for them but a cliffhanger from each into the next as they progress further and further in their struggles so there are other races that turn up in the stories and the animation i don't know whether you've you've probably seen the little trailer i did 
I'm privileged enough to have seen the first episode. Wow. Uh, the picture locked version as they yeah, say yeah. the industry. And it's just really great animation. It's really fun. It's really fast. It's beautifully done. It's really stylistic. It's uh, well, you saw a bit in the, in the trailer and it's, mm -hmm. uh, it's all every bit as good as that, if not better. Something I've always wanted to know is how do you differentiate between different Dalek voices? Because you are the voice of the Daleks, but you play such a different type of Dalek. You play so many different types of Daleks. Yeah. So how do you differentiate between, say, the Emperor and, say, a normal drone Dalek and, say, um, yeah. different types of Daleks? How do you differentiate? Well, um, I'll come to that in a moment. But as you say, I mean, I've been the voice of the Daleks now, you know, right from the beginning of the new TV series. I'm the longest mm -hmm. serving cast member of the series. Woo! Yeah. So, <laughs> which is lovely. Um, and um, it's, you know, acting is acting is acting. And whether you're playing um, a very subtle, gentle human character, mm -hmm. whether you're being a heroic, eccentric character like the Doctor, or whether you're being a mad, strange creature trapped inside a metal box like a Dalek, it's the same process really, you know, and you have to think about where you are, what you want, how you're gonna go about it. Mm -hmm. And uh, the Daleks, that involves a lot of being really paranoid and being really, really angry all the time. Excuse me, I was just muting a call there. <laughs> um, was it from the Emperor? Yeah, it was. He was yeah. friendly to say not to give away any of his secrets. Yeah. <laughs> um, and so uh, thinking about the different Dalek characters, which have been uh, so beautifully written by James Goss, the writer, it mm -hmm. really, and also um, Scott Hancock, who directed the, uh, the voices for this, you know, he, uh, we weren't actually in a session together, but he wrote copious notes for each line, giving me exactly the right interpretation. Um, you, you just think where the character's coming from and different voices come out. So for example, the emperor is very haughty, very grand, and he has this kind of booming voice, even though he's a funny little bubble-headed thing in this, mm -hmm. which is a fantastic golden emperor, right back from, I, some fans may remember the TV21 comic strips from the 1960s, which were mm -hmm. called the Daleks. Uh, he, he's a character based on the emperor for that, from that. And then there's the strategist who, as I mentioned before, is ancient and wise and evil and conniving and scheming. And he has a much breathier voice, you know. Mm. You can imagine that he's uh, <laughs> very wrinkled in there in yeah. inside his casing, you know. So, and there's a scientist who's, who's very, um, as if I don't rip these things out of my eye, is uh, as a scientist who's very, very, very precise and very, you know, everything is very wow. contained, you know. So they all have very different voices and very different impetuses. There's the executioner who's completely psychotic. I mean, all Daleks are pretty evil and murderous, but uh, he takes the biscuit, really. Yes, yes that's sort of, he's completely <laughs> mad the whole time. And I have to do all this stuff, you know, uh, while I'm doing the recording to get into character. And mm -hmm. I like to flip between the characters, not just to record all the lines for one character in one go. It's really interesting to have a conversation with yourself, really. Mm -hmm. it's, it's something I did from a very, very early age, playing around with tape recorders from about five years old onwards and just doing loads of radio dramas, as it were, on my mm -hmm. own, playing all the characters, making up the lines as I went along. Well, I was going to say, who, who, who is your favourite Dalek to, to play? It's really difficult. That must be really that. hard, to be it fair. Is. I mean, the good thing is, every time a Dalek script comes along, and I include this animation, Daleks, as well, there's always a new challenge, you know? And the challenge in this one was the interplay between those four main characters I've, I've uh, outlined to you. But there's always, it's so difficult to choose. I just love them all. I, I love doing the interesting different ones. Like there was Dalek Khan years back. He was all sort of giggly. <laughs> um, but at the same time, I'm quite happy doing the standard way I'll buy sort of Dalek who just, you know, takes the instructions, goes off and shoots people. Yeah. Um, so... It's really hard for me to say. I mean, I love doing the Emperor. I think he's a big favourite of mine and it's mm -hmm. really thrilling to be playing him again. This um, animation has an amazing supporting cast. You've got uh, Joe Sugg, you've got a Anjali Mahindra. Mm -hmm. um, what is it like working with them? Well, we were doing this in lockdown. 
so we weren't together when we yeah. recorded it. I mean, interestingly, I know Angeli quite well anyway, and uh, Aisha I've worked with before too. Um, so I, I know them from working together, but because I'm not plugged into uh, all the latest things, I didn't even know who Joe Sy was, but then I, it was pointed yeah. out to me that he was on Strictly. My wife said, yeah, yeah, he's the fellow on Strictly. I mean, he's, he's massive in the world of social media, isn't mm -hmm. he? So, and a huge Doctor Who fan. So I'm, I'm looking forward at some point to being able to chat to him. It'd be great. Yeah. And uh, just, just for you, um, you know, the Daleks have played such an important role in your life. Um, what do you think people's fascination is with them? Why do people love the Daleks? Well, I mean, you're right to say that they've played a huge role in my life. I mean, as a kid, I loved them. And um, then, you know, I was doing them for the Big Finish audio dramas. Yeah. And then Russell T. Davis, who brought Doctor Who back in all its glory, was a fan of those audio dramas, already knew my voice. And by giving me the job in the TV series, he changed mm -hmm. my life. I mean, you know, for a start, here I am having a conversation with Sam Cooke. I mean, there, there is no yeah. greater honor. <laughs> um, but, We've gone yeah. back in time. You're chatting to the actual 1930s singer, 60s singer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but but, people, uh, but the, what people like about the Daleks is the certainty of them. Yeah. Because the world and our lives are full of uncertainty, even more so at the moment with the, all the mm -hmm. terrible things that are happening in the world, with the pandemic, for example, and many, many other things. And there is a lack of certainty generally in people's lives. And the certainty of something in a fictional story that's so irretrievably bad and evil, mm -hmm. is, it, it's kind of, it is satisfying. And it also inspires the best response in our heroes. You know, the Doctor is all the braver, all the more ingenious because of the challenge of the Daleks. Mm -hmm. And uh, Nick, um, just- Oh, and they look cool as well. They do look cool, depending <laughs> on which one though, depending yeah, on which yeah. one, because Dalek Khan cool, did not too. look very cool. No, that's <laughs> um, and just finally, uh, Nick, when can we expect to see Daleks and how can we listen slash watch it? Well, I think it's in November, isn't it? Yeah. Um, I'm just tuning into my time space visualizer. Yeah, it's at the beginning of November and it's on YouTube. Mm -hmm. So it's, it'd be free coming out every week for people to catch up with a new episode, which I think is brilliant. What a treat for all of us. I can't wait to see the finished thing. Yeah. And uh, you've got a, a busy year in, in general uh, when it comes to the Daleks, because apparently there's a, there's, there's a Christmas special and apparently it's called Revolution of the Dalek. You know, so there is a festive special yeah oh sorry when sorry when exactly, festive sorry you know, when, festive. when exactly it'll be on who, yeah who, no, who, know. Knows? who knows who knows who knows yeah. <laughs> and it was announced at the end of the last series of doctor who it came up mm -hmm. on the screen next um revolution of the daleks yeah which is a very exciting full-on dalek adventure and i had fantastic fun filming that last year Mm -hmm. Amazing. Um, well, Nick, I'm not sure how to end an interview with a Dalek. So what would a Dalek say to an end an interview? What, what would they say? Cease talking. <laughs> <Yes>. Silence. <laughs> Thank you, Nick. Pleasure. <laughs>